Welcome to a thought-provoking journey into the realms of what might have been on the Alternate History Channel. Today, we dive deep into one of the most daring plots of World War II. Operation Valkyrie and its potential aftermath had it succeeded in its audacious goal of assassinating Adolf Hitler. Imagine for a moment a world where the Valkyrie conspirators, led by Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg and his compatriots, managed to remove the Führer from power, plunging the Third Reich into chaos and potentially altering the course of history. So join us as we unravel this fascinating story and don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment on the video to join the conversation and explore more intriguing alternate histories together. In July of 1944, amidst the turmoil of World War II, a coalition of high-ranking German officers and disillusioned politicians orchestrated one of the most audacious assassination attempts in history against Adolf Hitler, known as Operation Valkyrie. Originally conceived by the German army as a contingency plan to stabilize the government in the event of widespread disorder, this scheme was ingeniously repurposed to eliminate Hitler and upend the tyrannical Nazi regime from within. The conspiracy's nucleus was Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, a figure deeply troubled by Hitler's catastrophic leadership, the unspeakable horrors of the Eastern Front, and the Holocaust. Stauffenberg, along with his compatriots, sought to halt the war's devastation and save Germany from complete ruin. The plan involved Stauffenberg planting a bomb inside a briefcase, which he then detonated during a meeting with Hitler at the Wolf's Lair, his fortified headquarters on the Eastern Front. Despite their meticulous planning and the high stakes, the plot faltered. Hitler miraculously survived the blast with only minor injuries, largely because the briefcase was inadvertently moved behind a sturdy leg of the conference table, which absorbed much of the explosion's force. The plot's failure led to swift and brutal repercussions. The conspirators were swiftly apprehended and executed, triggering a fierce crackdown on dissent across Germany. Yet this episode envisions a reality where Operation Valkyrie succeeds. The bomb eliminates Hitler, plunging the Third Reich into disarray. Key figures alongside Stauffenberg, such as General Friedrich Olbricht, who provided critical military support, Major General Henning von Tresko, the intellectual architect behind the resistance's moral and strategic framework, and Ludwig Beck, a former army chief of staff and the designated head of state post-coup, all play pivotal roles in executing the aftermath of Hitler's death. They activate the Valkyrie Orders, originally intended to secure the government against uprisings, to now commandeer the state apparatus, detain SS and Gestapo leadership, and seize vital communication lines and government edifices. In the wake of Hitler's demise and the ensuing capture or disarray of Nazi leadership, the conspirators declare the dictator's death and initiate overtures to the Allies, signalling their intent to cease hostilities and negotiate an end to the war. Could the conspirators have swiftly consolidated control? Or would they have encountered opposition from Nazi loyalists and a populace deeply indoctrinated by Hitler's propaganda? Furthermore, how would the Allied forces react to a Germany bereft of its infamous leader, yet still under the sway of a military junta? The unfolding scenario explores the ramifications of such a pivotal moment, offering insights into the potential reshaping of both Germany's destiny and the global landscape of power. Following the successful assassination of Adolf Hitler, the conspirators, led by Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, spring into action. Their meticulously laid plans shifting from theory to urgent reality. The immediate aftermath is a whirlwind of activity aimed at seizing control and steering Germany away from the precipice of total ruin. Stauffenberg, along with General Friedrich Olbricht, Major General Henning von Treskow and Ludwig Beck, spearheads the operation. Their first order of business is to implement the Valkyrie Orders, cleverly repurposed to mobilise the reserve army, not against an external threat, but to take control of the German state. They move swiftly to arrest leaders of the SS and Gestapo effectively decapitating the Nazi regime's instruments of terror and repression. This bold move aims to prevent any immediate counter-coup efforts and to stifle potential pockets of Nazi resistance. With the core of Nazi leadership either under arrest or in disarray, the conspirators establish a provisional government. Ludwig Beck, 
envisioned as the head of this new government, steps into his role as the guiding figure for a post-Hitler Germany. Beck, along with his fellow conspirators, begins the delicate task of reaching out to the Allies, signalling their intent to negotiate an end to the war. Their message is clear. The Nazi regime is over, and with it, its warmongering policies. The public's reaction to Hitler's assassination and the sudden shift in power is a tapestry of relief, confusion and scepticism. The German populace, long subjected to Nazi propaganda, finds itself at a crossroads, torn between the indoctrinated loyalty to Hitler and the prospect of an end to the relentless war. Meanwhile, figures like Erwin Rommel, who had been implicated in the conspiracy only in its aftermath and faced forced suicide in our timeline, might now play a pivotal role in the new government, lending their military prowess and public respect to stabilize and guide the nation through its transformation. The Allies, initially wary of the conspirators' intentions, face a strategic dilemma. The death of Hitler and the emergence of a provisional government in Germany present an unprecedented opportunity to accelerate the end of the war. However, they demand unconditional surrender, skeptical of any attempts by the German military to negotiate a cessation of hostilities that could potentially leave remnants of the old regime in power. This leads to intense diplomatic negotiations, with the provisional government working tirelessly to convince the Allies of their commitment to peace and democratic principles. Germany's immediate trajectory undergoes a dramatic shift. The military, following orders from the new government, begins to withdraw from occupied territories, focusing instead on defending the homeland and maintaining order during the transition. This strategic reorientation provides the Allies with opportunities to advance, further hastening the end of the war. The success of Operation Valkyrie and the subsequent actions taken by Stauffenberg and his co-conspirators mark the beginning of a new chapter in German history. Their swift moves to dismantle the Nazi power structure and reach out to the Allies for peace lay the groundwork for a Germany free from the tyranny of Hitler's regime. Yet, the path ahead is fraught with challenges as the nation grapples with its recent past and the monumental task of rebuilding a society grounded in democracy and justice. In the wake of Hitler's assassination and the establishment of a provisional government by the conspirators, the fabric of World War II begins to unravel in ways previously unimaginable. The initial Allied response to the overtures from the new German government is marked by caution and scepticism. The Western Allies, led by the United States and the United Kingdom, while wary, show a cautious openness to negotiation. They recognize the potential for a swift end to the conflict in Europe, which could save countless lives and resources. However, their willingness to engage is tempered by two non-negotiable conditions, the complete dismantlement of the Nazi war machine and the establishment of a democratic government in Germany. Conversely, the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin views the situation with deep suspicion. Stalin's experiences with the Nazis, marked by betrayal and horrific bloodshed on the Eastern Front, make him deeply skeptical of any quick shifts in German politics. He suspects a ruse designed to weaken the Soviet position in Europe. As a result, the USSR advocates for a more hard-line approach, demanding not just unconditional surrender, but also significant reparations and the physical occupation of German territory to ensure a complete eradication of Nazi influence. This divergence in the Allied camp leads to tense negotiations, both with the new German government and internally among the Allies themselves. The provisional government in Germany, understanding the delicate balance of power, navigates these negotiations with the aim of ending the war as swiftly and peacefully as possible, while also preserving German sovereignty and preventing the country from being carved up. The end of the war, in this alternate timeline, comes not with a single definitive act of surrender, but through a series of agreements that reflect the complex web of demands and concessions among the Allies and the new German government. Germany agrees to a form of unconditional surrender, but with assurances from the Western Allies regarding the preservation of a unified German state, post-war, and a commitment to democratic reconstruction. The Soviet Union secures a zone of occupation in the East, larger than in our timeline, driven by Stalin's insistence on a buffer against future threats. Germany undergoes a period of denazification and democratization, but the process is fraught with challenges, given the deep scars left by the war and the Holocaust. 
the Western Allies' influence leads to a more rapid establishment of democratic institutions in the West, while the Soviet-occupied East faces harsher conditions, leading to an even more pronounced division than in our reality. This division sets the stage for a Cold War that mirrors historical events, but with nuanced differences, as the early involvement of a German government in the post-war reconstruction influences the dynamics of European politics. Europe, in the aftermath of this alternate World War II, is a continent deeply marked by its scars, but also by a complex tapestry of hope, reconciliation, and the daunting task of rebuilding. The legacy of the conspirators who succeeded in assassinating Hitler looms large, not just in Germany, but across Europe, as a testament to the power of resistance against tyranny and the potential for profound change even in the darkest of times. As we conclude this riveting exploration of an alternate history where Operation Valkyrie succeeded, we find ourselves standing at the crossroads of what could have been. The swift and decisive actions of Stauffenberg and his fellow conspirators set the stage for a dramatic shift in the war's trajectory, sparking a series of negotiations that could have brought an earlier end to the conflict. The envisioned peace, however, comes with its complexities, as the Allies and the new German government navigate a delicate balance of power, ideology and the shared goal of a lasting peace. The long-term ramifications for Germany, Europe and the global order are profound, painting a picture of a continent in search of reconciliation and rebuilding. This speculative journey through history challenges us to consider the power of individual actions and the fragile nature of historical events. As we reflect on the legacy of those who dared to resist tyranny, we're reminded of the potential for change even in the darkest times. Join the conversation by liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts on this alternate scenario. What do you think the world would look like today if Operation Valkyrie had succeeded? Let's continue to explore the fascinating possibilities of history together and don't forget to comment with your insights and questions.